of time. Time. Okay, he bought this tape, right? And it was an interview session. But my dad flipped it on his show and acted like he was asking the questions, like literally live. It blew our minds because it was literally like he took the questions, asked them, <laughs> and then they press play. Oh, he, was it, he wasn't there. So we were just like, how did he make that, <laughs> how did he make that happen? And even people that watch it like, wow, this guy interviewed Tony Braxton. <laughs> from very young that this entertainment media space somehow some way I will I will be this is this is it you know so fast forward back into uni we're pushing you know and my dad finds out that I'm a DJ he's not having it you know but then there was a point where he softened up because he came to visit mm. in Boston I had a gig at UMass Boston there was no way I was missing this gig because it was my first gig at UMass Boston and I've been trying to get this you must bust in as a client. You know, like as a DJ, you had back then in school, you had certain schools you wanted to DJ for. Mm. So you must Amherst, you must Boston, Wellesley College, you know, that thing. So the, for the first time, the ASA group, African Students Association group in you must Boston decided, okay, let's give this OB guy a shot. Mm. My dad is in town that weekend. How am I going to have this game? <laughs> I'm right, first of all, I had to hide my equipment every time my dad was coming in town, hide it underneath the stairs in the basement. So he doesn't see it all. If he's adventurous enough to start searching around, I send it to my friend's house mm. to keep it there till he leaves, you know, kind of thing. So this time around, I couldn't fake it. So I had to come out clean. I was like, listen, <laughs> I'm a DJ. I have a gig today. I have to go for it. They've paid for it. And he sits me down to advise me. It was the, the reaction I didn't expect it. He was like, listen, this is why I'm telling you not to do this. You have to understand the business of it. Don't let anybody pimp you. Don't get played. If you say this is how much you're gonna collect, make sure you get that money. You know, like literally a crash course on the business aspect of it. And his fear is like, don't expose yourself too much. This, these are the these are the things you're going to see. You know, women, alcohol, drugs, but know where you're from. Hmm. You know, know where you're from. Know your Christian background. All those things. Because, like like I was saying earlier, the, my struggle has always been with my faith and what I do as a DJ. Sometimes when people see me in church, they're shocked. I'm like, why are you shocked? Am I not a human being? <laughs> Should I not believe in God because I'm a DJ? You know, but my dad literally breaks everything and he said, make sure you've actually collect, collected your check from this UMass place. You know, and I want to see the check. I think it was like fifty dollars. Like, <laughs> like I want to see the check. You know, so he explained to me the business part of it. And then on that trip before he left, he actually bought me a set of turntables. Oh, wow. You know, but then that story changed once he got back to Nigeria, because then that time he had transitioned from entertainment media, media to, NPC. to NPC. So now it's more of an ego thing for him, like, how can my son be a DJ when I'm get, getting into position where I can place him somewhere mm. when he graduates? So even if it's in media, he was thinking CNN, he was thinking news, like how you were saying, yes. yeah, because then... Even though he had open house party, he still did insurance today. He of still course. did the business show. Yes. Then he still did Sunday, Sunday show, show that still was more on current affairs versus entertainment. His only entertainment show was Saturday open house Saturday party. open house party and good award of entertainment yeah. back then. You know, so when he got back to Nigeria after a while, he called me. He's like, "Those stunt I are for you. Throw it away." I was like, well, "Why are you doing this thing with me, man? Like, this is actually what I want to do." So after that moment. For the longest time, I kept it a secret that I was still DJing. Anytime you come around, you know, do the regular routine, hide it, throw it, uh, throw it to my friends to hide it from me and all that, you know. But my passion didn't, it, it, it was always there. You know, like I really needed, I wanted to grow. And I felt like since I was already studying mass communication in school, this, is, this ties into it. I always knew that he would come around, you know, so I had to be stubborn. I had to be selfish. I had to decide that I'm going to do this and I'm going to make something out of it. I still remember somebody one day looking at me like, what are you trying to do? You want to become Jimmy Jat? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I do. Do you know who Jimmy Jat is? You know, I start going, going down his chair. It's like, yeah, but does he make money? I'm like, have you heard how much he's charging in Nigeria? You know, that kind of thing. And obviously, people coming up with people like this and seeing what they were doing, I know, like, I knew at some point Kenya and Dimo needed a protege. I just, I'm like, I have to be in that position for one day Kenya to say, Obi, I need you. So there was even one point I went with them to the to Grammys. Grammys. <laughs> just right. I went with them to the Grammys just That's to right. 
just to see, just to watch, to watch them do their thing. Just, I didn't, even, not even just. You were part of the show the too. Cool. <laughs> let me carry the camera. Let me carry, you know, just let me see what's happening. This is what I want to do. So I, I made up my mind very early to decide to do this, and you know, it's been a lot, a lot of ups and downs. Moving to Nigeria was a huge transition for me because I had to start again. It wasn't DJOB that came in December to rock with us. Now I live here. So now I'm a threat to everybody else. There's competition. OK, you want to join us in this? No, it's not going to be that easy. I had to go. I, I had to leave Boston. Because when, when I left Boston, I, was, I had moved up the pay grade. I had finished doing college gigs. I was moving into the club scene. You know, I was even looking to start doing radio gigs in Boston. And then my dad passed. So that threw me back to the beginning. Let me not even say 20 steps. Threw me back to the beginning. But funny enough, I don't even know if Nito remembers this, but Nito was literally the only person from the younger music scene, entertainment scene, that reached out to me and came to my house and actually advised me, like, listen, this is going to pass, but just know <coughs> what you want to do after it passes. I was very close to my dad. Like my dad, my dad was my mentor. Like I looked up to him for everything. So even when he passed, I was like, I don't even know if I want to keep going with this DJ thing. Like, were you in Nigeria when he stayed? When he when he passed, I was in the states. I was driving to church, got to church. While I was driving to church, my girlfriend then look. I still remember. She looks at me and says, "Have you spoken to your dad?" Like, no, call him after church. Because we, we always did this Sunday phone call, but call back home on Sundays. How's everybody doing? Go, you know, get ready for the week, school, blah, blah, blah. So, I was like, yeah, after church, no more things, I'll call him. And she didn't ask that question based on if she heard anything. Nothing had happened at that mm. point. It was just say, oh, when was the last time you spoke to your dad? Uh, cool. And two weeks before that, the almighty graduation happened. <laughs> because mm. Kenny went through the struggle with us. I'm like, Obi's not trying to graduate. Obi doesn't want to graduate. Obi doesn't want to graduate. He needs to graduate. He needs to graduate. And two weeks before my dad passed, I actually graduated, walked the stage, and he was there. So me thinking he was not going to be around was no one ever thinking he's you know perfectly healthy, nothing going on, you know. So I'm in church, sitting down, and my phone starts buzzing. I'm just like, ah, what's going on? Maybe is there an event? Someone posted a flyer that I'm, you know, <laughs> that I'm DJing somewhere. But I was like, there's nothing coming up. And then I look at the home screen and I see a tweet. And someone says, please, can someone check on DJ Obi? And I'm like, why is anyone checking on me? Mm. You know, And that's literally how I found out. So I don't know if Instagram was around that time. I can't remember. It probably was 2012. So I checked, I checked Twitter to follow the trend. And I see that something has happened in Lagos. But I, had, I didn't find out it was a plane crash here. I just knew something happened. And um, it was around the, the militants were, you know, very live at that point. So I thought maybe an attack had happened. And then my dad was oil and gas, so I thought maybe a pipeline had burst. That maybe it was. So I was still trying to figure out what happened. So I stepped out of church to call my sister. She didn't pick up. Text, what's going on? No answer. It's like, where's daddy? And then she responded, we don't know. I was like, my father is like very timely. Like you. You, you one of, yeah, one of his biggest things where you have to know where everybody's at, at every point in time. So for them at home to now tell me they don't know where my dad is, like that's like impossible. What do you mean you don't know where he is? So I start calling, calling, and going online to find out what happened. And I went on Bella Niger, found out that a plane crash had happened. Yeah, at that point, church had ended for me. Called my girlfriend like, yo, we need to leave right now. She's when gonna. You, I saw a plane crash had happened. But then you didn't know if he was on the plane. I didn't know he was, if he was on the plane or not. I just saw a plane crash had happened. And even at that point, they were reporting that the plane crash was from Lagos to Abuja. So I was like, there's no, this was a Sunday. My dad should have already been in Lagos. Or if he didn't come to Lagos, then he should still be in Abuja since he didn't, because his thing was he came to Lagos on the weekends to stay with the family. And sometimes if he wanted to work for the NPC office in Lagos, he would just stay the week in Lagos. So at that point, I'm still trying to fi figure out the details. So I, I call my girlfriend that we need to leave. And on the way home, frantically finding out, calling one of my older cousins was his right-hand man. So I call him. I'm like, guy, what's going on? 
He's like, I can't talk right now, but I'll call you back in 20. So everyone was keeping information from me at this point. Why are you doing at this point? Very confused. Very confused, very tense. But then something in me just felt defeated because it, it, it almost felt like I knew it happened, but I, w I just wanted to make sure that it did not happen, mm. you know? And then, then regrets started kicking in because then, what if I actually made that phone call on my way to church? What if I actually made that phone call on my way to church, you know? So I get home, go online on my computer this time because I need to see it in, in the big screen on the iMac. I didn't, I didn't want to check my phone. Check in, check in, check in. Confirm that there's a plane crash from Abuja to Lagos, but I'm like, he still shouldn't be on the plane because his normal route is Lagos Friday, come back, coming back to Abuja Sunday. Then they release the names. And obviously they start with the popular people on the flight. And he's like number two. Like, I, I'm, the way I've never reacted like that in life, like, I, I stood up and tore my shirt. <laughs> like, no, it's not true. I keep calling his phone, calling his phone, calling his phone, calling his phone, just trying to get, and at this point, his phone is still ringing. So I'm like, pick up, like, you know, answer the phone, answer the phone. Was that messing with your head? <laughs> it was messing with my head, seriously. Answer the phone, answer the phone. They're calling me from, that, from Lagos to say, calm down, we're still trying to sort it out. But I'm like, no, his phone is ringing, so wherever this thing happens, someone needs to rush there. He's probably just, like, maybe unconscious or something, so someone needs to rush there quickly to figure it out. You might still see him, and you might still see, you might hear his phone ringing, his phone is ringing. Shortly after that, his phone stopped ringing, and it was just confusion from then on. But then, I've never booked a flight ticket that quick. Booked the flight ticket, and all this time is confusion, because I'm trying to get to Lagos. I stop in London, and they're talking about this long layover, and I look for the next flight, to connect to Abuja from France. So I st I'm in London, go to France, trying to get to Abuja, get a call from home that no, I should come to Lagos. So I go back to London. This is all <laughs> as part of, you know, going back, to, going back to London to still get on the same flight that I tried to get off of, to go back to, to get to Lagos. This whole process, I look homeless. I look like a wreck. At every chance I could get, I'll sit down on the floor and start crying. And it was painful because this now made international news. So literally everywhere I looked in the airport, they were talking about this thing that just happened in Nigeria. And all I could think about was my dad there. It shattered me. I remember being in the BA lounge, eating, at this point I calmed myself down, like calm down, calm down. Just maybe when you get home, things will be different. And I'm trying to eat and I look up and the, goes right back to breaking news. Dana, air crash, blah, blah, blah. Like, I just start crying. Like, not this time, not even crying. I just start crying out loud. Luckily, I don't, I don't even know if the, the Nigerians in the, in, the, in, the la, in the lounge come up to me, like, calm down, calm down, what's your name? A few of them actually knew my dad. They're like, oh my god. So, and some of them had just found out from seeing me there. So it was, it was just a ripple effect of emotions and tragedy. You know, it was crazy. Get to Lagos, I didn't want to pick up my luggage. I needed to leave the airport. My cousins were there to pick me up, you know. And when they came to pick me up, they, they actually confirmed to me that, you know, he was on the flight. They've sent some family to the crash site. If they can find him, they can, if not, you know, at, at that point, I don't even know how to describe. I don't even know if there's words for it. At that point, like life hit me because I automatically be, you automatically become a man right there. Like life cannot slap you any harder than that. So you know, going back to even the reality thing you're talking about, even now sometimes I laugh at some people when I see the way they act as celebs. You know, me and Issa have this running joke where they never see life. No, because then sometimes it's like, guy, most of the things you're doing now, you're going to regret later, even though they feel like enjoyment now, you, you know, because real life hasn't hit you. Some people live like they're in control. And in that moment when my dad died, it was the first time I realized that, like, life 
was so fragile because this is my ultimate alpha male. Like, not, if you ask Jerry, we were, if you see my dad, you see us, we were like ducklings, like always around my father, always. You see my dad, you see his, his kids, like yeah. NTA, AIT, Ripper, who are always there. You know, so he was this guy that, and then my dad's faith was so strong. I always tell people that my, if my dad didn't do me that he was meant to be a pastor, like our family devotion was a full on, like <laughs> <laughs> three, four hours trying to pray. The only thing that was remaining was collect offering, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it, it just, it hit me so hard. Like at that, that was one point in my life that I really did not know what to do because now I'm automatically the head of the family as the first son. Then, then DJ felt like, yeah, Obi, you're wasting your time. You are joking. Like, are you serious? What is that? You better, <laughs> you better start looking for how you can pull this, pull this whole thing together. You know, so many des decisions fell on my lap in less than 24 hours. <laughs> Funeral arrangements, where to bury him, how, how to reach out to. Man, uh, 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 honestly, for the f uh, it is, if this is the first time I'm gonna like, mm. that was where I realized that healthcare in Nigeria uh, is not even a, a, a word in a book, talk less of a chapter. Like, for us to, for, us, for them to identify the body, we had to do a DNA testing. That took forever. The, the Dana crash happened June 3rd. Some families still haven't buried the, the, the deceased. No joke. June 3rd, it happened June 3rd. We buried in September. And what we buried was the torso. We couldn't, I didn't want to see it, but that was what they found based on DNA testing that took forever. They, they had to send out to the labs in London. They had to split it between London, India, and America, or something like that. So even to get feedback was, and then you go, you go into the hospital and you can smell the dead bodies. Even if you're not seeing them, you can smell it. It's just like, wow. Like, then, you now, then I now have to now picture my dad, what, you know, his status and when you, how, how it was. And I'm like, this is what it has come down to, you know? So that, it was a huge life lesson for me to be humble, to get closer to God, and like literally live for today. It's one thing you say to get closer to God. Because you said your father was a man of faith, but were you upset with God at some moment, at some point, or angry? At some point, yes, I was, because it didn't make any sense to me. I'm just like, this guy had, like, when I say, when I call my dad a pastor, and I'm not joking, like, if my dad sat down here, he would have probably converted all of us if we're not, if our faith wasn't that strong. My dad was the kind of person that he was, you know, you introduce yourself, hi, my name is Bez, and the next question coming out of his mouth is, do you know Jesus? I'm not joking. It, 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 in fact, it was to a fault because at some point he only dealt with pastors, even as businessmen. Yeah. He, he did, <laughs> he's there to confirm. At some point, he only dealt with pastors. If you, if you're, if you were not, a strong Christian, he didn't want to deal with you because he didn't want you to taint his belief. He didn't want you to pull him into where he didn't want to be. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, and that was even one of his major problems with me being a DJ. It was kind of, it was, it was now a thing of ex spiritual exposure. What are you, how are you exposing yourself, or what are you exposing yourself to when you're in a nightclub or when you're in a party, and people are grinding on each other and they're serving alcohol and people are drunk and, you know, like the spirit, he, he, my dad was very spiritual when it came to things like that, you know. So when, but then when I say getting closer to God, you, you understand that even in that moment, God was in control, which is messed up at the same time because nothing happens without the permission of the Most High. There's no other way, like, even during, during that moment, was when, during that time was when I understood, a pastor had to explain it to me. Even for the devil to mess with you, he still needs to take permission from God. That's what Jimmy said. 
even for the devil to mess with you, he still has to go and take permission from God. And if God doesn't approve, he's wasting, he's not going, he can't go through with it. He's not going to, he's still not going to disobey, honestly. So I had to understand that this was God's doing. And you cannot question it. And that's the truth. Like, there's no, there's no long story to it. This was God's doing, and you have to question it. What you now have to do is turn this into a blessing. And that's where reality kicks in. You know, so a lot of people go through tra- tragedies like that, and they give up on life. Some people, I've met people today, and their, 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 their success story stops where, when I lost my mom or when I lost my dad, because after that, they didn't know what to do. You know, but then the grace, they didn't also understand God. To understand that you can go on your knees and pray and ask for grace and ask for favor and continue from where that person stopped to even be greater. Like when people were telling me, oh, you have, you you know, you'll be greater than your dad. I'm like, do you know what my dad did? Do you know the things he knew? Like, my dad was so intelligent. Like, he can sit down here and talk about politics. Discuss anything. He can sit down here and talk about music and talk about music business and talk about, like I remember one day I had a conversation with him about Dame Dash and I'm like, how do you know about Dame Dash? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, and he would still be the same person you sit down and talk about the Clintons or the Bush era or, you know, whatever it is. He was so intelligent. So to tell me who was trying to become a DJ, that I would feel like I would be greater than this guy. I didn't see it happening. At that time. At that time, yeah. At that time. The thing about, you know, um, like sometimes when we try and figure out God, you can't figure out God. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. You, can't. you know, um, sometimes, you know, with, I've heard this before, you know, like when people lose loved ones or what have you, um, there was a place somebody said, well, maybe that person was in a state of grace. You know, for yeah. us Catholics, you know, that's a big thing when you're in a state of grace, you're absent, absent of sin. You know, so, what, what, I mean, what if the case is that the reason that person died at that particular moment was, or that it happened, was that because the person is in a state of grace, so they are going to heaven, you know. But even this, even that in itself is not a befitting um, explanation as to why why we lose loved ones or what have you, but um, I mean, your, your dad left you. What if some, some people died with their parents? Mm. Yeah. yeah, there was a family. There was a whole family that died on the yeah. same. That died yeah. on the same aircraft. There, yeah. there, there's um yeah. like this um what's the other crash? The Sosoliso. Yeah. Yeah, like there's some people they lost their wife yeah, and their three children. Yeah. Yeah. You One know. Question: Did what was the official position as to why that happened? What the crash? Yeah. They, till tomorrow they've never said. They just, they just like I've heard different stories. But they will never. I've heard, it. I've heard, engine failure, and the Nigerian pilot did not want to fly, so they found the Lebanese guy or something like that, Indian. or Indian pilot that was willing to take the risk. I've also heard that fine, they took that risk knowing that they were actually going to land in Lagos, but that at that point was taking off. So they had to circle in the air. And in circling the air, they didn't have time. Hmm. So that's why, they, so, it, so the way the person was explaining to me was, if she wasn't ready to take off, they would have landed successfully, even with a faulty engine, but they would have landed. But then because they had to circle in the air, they ran out of time and crashed. You know, then, there's also been the whole, you know, there's, there's a lot of explanations to it. I don't think anybody ever finds peace in losing a loved one. I don't, like, I've, I've met people today, no, but I've met people today that, when I say peace, when, when, when I mean peace, it's like, when you talk about it, you still feel some grief. Yeah, yeah that's, I mean. So it's not, it can that, never yeah. be complete peace. Mm. It can never be, it's like maybe you have, a, no, bru- you have a bruise. Peace is 100%. You don't have peace or you don't have peace. Exactly. So that's what like I mean. Like trust is 100% or zero. Oh, in Nigeria, we have peace. <laughs> 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 but I don't think that's... Trust small, shy. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you can, I don't, I don't think you can ever are, have Are you complete. upset? I, I, I was upset. I was upset for a very, up, up until April this year, mm. I was very upset. I, 
I still try not to, but sometimes sometimes I see the that aquadana. The water. I tell people you can't you can't you can't the way, if you want to bring any water, don't bring me that. Mm. My friends that drive Kias, I don't sometimes I don't, can you fly, I want. Can you fly Dana Airways? No. Uh, my my, uh, my 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 thoughts. I mean, we we scattered around the subject a, a little yeah. earlier. I am not, um, and I'm sensitive to you know what you've had to deal with, but I'm a bit less. I, I, I mean, I know that my philosophy in life is you know we're born, to, we're, you're born, you're, you know, it's life and death, right? Day and night. Yeah. I've never been under the illusion that um, death is not around the corner. I don't fear it. Mm -hmm. I don't anticipate it, but I can deal with the reality. As long as there was night and there's day, there's mm -hmm. going to be life and death, right? Mm -hmm. However, I'm not as spiritual, I'm not as philosophical about a lot of those things. Mm -hmm. um, accidents happen. To a large extent, they're explainable, they're avoidable, they're manageable. Mm -hmm. I think there's too much God conversation around this stuff in this country. <laughs> Um, I was in secondary school, um, Loyola Jesuit College, and that was, um, I mean, the, the, the school that suffered that sort of lethal crash later on. Yeah, so um, I used to do a lot of like card designing, you know, we make cards, you know, so the, the vice principal came to us and asked us, one, I and one of my friends, to make a card, a thank you card, for, uh, to one of the schools that we played with or so. So I was making a card. Um, in, in my dorm, and then the principal walks in, it was a white guy, you know, and he's like, uh, my, my name is Emmanuel, so he goes, Emmanuel, would you walk with me, you know, um, somebody wants to see you at the admin block, you know, so I, I, I go with him to the admin block, and then as soon as we got into the admin block, that's, that's why I knew white people are different from <laughs> black people, he just turned to me like a movie and said, you know, uh, I'm sorry, your dad was in a car crash and unfortunately he died, you know. And when he said that, I could hear the crash happen mm. in my head, you know, because that was shock. And I didn't cry, you know. So I walked in and I saw, told my uncle sitting, waiting for me, and then just saying, you know, you have to be strong, you know, your mom is already in the village. And my village is like 40 minutes or 30 minutes away from Abuja, is Karu, you know. So I tried to process it, you know, because at that time he was, he was running. Um, he was a gubernatorial aspirant, you know, for Nasara State. So, I mean, I'd come to school that, that year with his notepads, his campaign notepads, you know, people were already saying, ah, governor's child, you know, you're going to enter, you know, and that, that, was, that was, for me, was going to be like our breakthrough year because he was, you know, really, really, yes, he was really popular. You know, so, and that happened, you know, so I started asking questions. So my mom is not going to be first lady again. So I'm not going to be governor. You know, like at that point, yeah, that was what I was thinking at that point. And then later on, I started thinking, oh, wow, this man is really gone. What happens to me in school? You know, what happens to school fees? Because my mom is a caterer. Like, who pays my school fees in Loyola? You know? And then my cousins walk in and start crying. That's why I burst into tears. You know? And we take a drive, you know, to Karu, and I see my mom. You know, people are surrounding her, people are screaming crying, you know, and it was, it was just a surreal experience, you know, this guy just came to visit me like a while ago, and actually yesterday was, you know, okay, yesterday was uh, 20 years since he passed away, you know, on the 7th, and it was just like three, three days before my birthday. So my mom had actually come from Joss, you know, she had baked my cake, you know, she, she came to, she went to Kefi, was waiting for him to come, because he had apparently gone to Niger State and she was waiting for him to come, and he never came back home, oh. you know. So it was, it, was, it was very, very difficult, you know. <laughs> what was the, the, the change? The word is not change in fortune, because I remember when we were doing the mm. interview, it was, it was a quick adjustment, because you went, you went from uh, <laughs> almost being governor to... Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was, it was crazy. I mean, I just remember my friends being very sympathetic, you know, people were helping me copy my notes in school, you know, while I was away, and I came back to school, and from this boy that was going to be governor's son to absolutely zero, you know. And my, my mom's clients then were, were my dad's friends, you know, the politicians, you know, so, but you know what happens after 
death in, in, in that situation. You know, people sort of forget you. People sort of just leave, you know, and man, it was, it was tough, you know, so, so yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was he was actually going to Mina, you know. He was going to see um, Babangida. I think they were raising funds for election, you know. And it was actually at Suleja, um, and there was a police checkpoint on a on a hill. So they were going up, and there was a police checkpoint. And when they got there, there was a truck that was parked without lights. Yeah. So that was exactly what happened. They rammed into that truck. Um, the driver was totally gone. My dad was at the back. He had a list injury, you know, a, a cut on his forehead and uh, on the wrist. Because I saw the, the document from the hospital. And when you're, when you're talking about, you know, <laughs> the Nigerian, you know, medical system, I related, you know, I could relate because, you know, what I saw was that a patient came in, you know, he had vitals, his vitals were, you know, were sound and everything. And then they checked on the patient after an hour. He didn't die then. No, the no. They wow. checked on the patient wow. after an <laughs> hour. Bleeding. Yeah. And then yeah. after an hour, he was he was he. I mean, he was most gone. of these deaths yeah. have happened anywhere else. Yeah. 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 You're right. And I'm and I'm not talking about Western countries here. Yeah. yeah. I'm talking about African countries. It's a big shame yeah. that we just still have should have passed it. This terrible, terrible, terrible health system. You know. have happened in Kenya. Was even in Accra. Because they didn't, I mean, they didn't put him to anything, no respiratory, no, nothing. He was, he was just there. And it was written, you know, because I saw, I saw, I saw it. He was in a, it was a notebook. It was like all these Olympic notebooks. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> written. Yeah. That's you know, crazy. so um, that was, I want to ask you if you're angry with the system, you know, because I, I, mean, I kept to, on to, thinking to, about to it. To an extent, I'm you not know. going to lie, like, I, I, I do get angry. I yeah. do get frustrated. You know, having to go through that process, you know, even with my younger siblings, having to take them through that process yeah. of, you know, even the blood test, it was it was just a bunch of us in the room. They went, they went, compa there was no compassion. It was like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I beg, I beg. Yeah. We, we are not the only ones we have to see. Uh, yeah, we still you understand? In this country. I mean, it, you know, be, it's, it's mind blowing because you go, you experience all that stuff, but then, <laughs> We still, like he said, we still live here. Yeah, yeah. You know. Can I ask you guys a question? Yeah. Where do you think is the best hospital on? You can't count <laughs> by. No, I'm just asking a question. Where in this area? Yeah, in this area, close by. That is the best hospital. Where do you think? For your family, just in case, right? Just for anybody. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I've, I've not gotten. I've, I, I, I go to Premier. Okay. And I've not gotten. The, I'm, I haven't had any letdown. Like they, they actually. They're up to date with the equipment, they're, they're sound. In terms of customer service they, service, they might have to brush up, but I think that's just a Nigerian thing. The reason I'm bringing this up yeah, is because yeah. there's a hotel, the hospital, yeah, and this is a very important issue to talk about. There's a hospital that you would say is maybe like where the rich people go to, like in this area that is posh and what have mm. you. And um, I was having a pain in my chest, like it felt like it's in my heart or something. Mm. and. I was looking for the hospital, so I called my wife. I said, where is the hospital? Wait, I was panicking. She said, uh, she let her find out. I said, I'm, I'm dying, you know. I'm dying, but I can find out now. So I, come, I kept on missing the way to the hospital. Like, you know, like it's on the road, but I'll go, I'll pass it. I'll make a U-turn. I'll say, hey, where is this hospital? I'm dying here. Go find me the hospital. So I get there, and I just pack my car. Car, just sharp, sharp. I jump out of the. I think I jumped out of the car right before parking the car. I go inside. I tell him, "Look, I'm dying right now. Now, now, I'm feeling one pain here. Mm. It was a bad. It was a very, very bad pain. I could feel inside. And I'm trying to explain to them, and they're just like, mm. I don't think we have any hospital mm. that is um, that, on that level. And I've been to our hospital. Sorry. Yeah, no. So I'm I don't raging, know. and then somebody's like, "Don't worry, you'll be okay." Now, I'm still, like, I'm scared. I'm like, I haven't felt this before, but I just do some reason. So I'm in the theater. My wife has come, and the, uh, I mean, not the theater, the room. So the doctor is dragging his leg. The doctor is, like, this tall. He's just dragging his leg. Eh, what did they say that is wrong? <laughs> what did they say that is wrong with me? Are you serious? Yes, Are you not a doctor? <laughs> if you don't want to do it, better come in now. Yes, because yeah, I went to one of these best hospitals in Nigeria. I played squash. I got injured. My uncle. Mm. And uh, they told me, 
I don't want to give details because you will know the hospital. They told me that I had to do MRI scan, so I paid for it. And I got to, they gave me a date. Mm. Not immediately, because mm. it wasn't available yeah, immediately. Immediate. They gave me a date. I went on that day. I, I wanted to do mine and sharp, sharp leave. I got there one and a half hour before. Oh. I stayed two hours later, and they told me they couldn't do it. Yeah. By, the next, by, the, by, by my next appointment, the machine was bad. Mm. And I already paid. And nobody even called me. And this is one of the hospitals you want to go to. Because and a lot of people will not even be able to... Some, some people, many people will not even be able to afford this hospital. Yeah. A few years back down the line, couldn't afford this. That's where I went and I couldn't still get treatment. Because it's to collect... Sorry, and my dad died the same way. So it's, hospital. Yeah, it's to because collect your money. This is my blood test. They, 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 was, they didn't get the vial to collect the blood. So the blood was dripping, was squirting on me. And they asked the nurse to, from across the room to bring them. They were just discombobulated. My blood test was supposed to come out in an hour. It came out, to, uh, this was around six, came out around midnight. Yes, you know what they were doing? They were trying to get me scared because they wanted to, me to stay in the hospital. Mm, okay. I told them that I have two small kids and I'm not staying here and I'm going home. They said, um, that you, in fact, what I think you have is, um, they said calling big language. So as they call it, my wife will Google it. Then the guy says something, she said, ah, this thing is heart attack. Oh. He said, yeah, but you know, it's this thing that I can only see the cardiologist if I sleep overnight. I said, look, eh, if anything is going to happen, it's going to happen, but me, I'm going home tonight. And you know what I found out? Everything was just a lie. You know what I had? I had heart spot. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> I saw this cardiologist. The cardiologist asked me, Nito, what did you eat? I said, um, I ate pepper chicken. He said, after pepper chicken, what did you eat? I said, um... Pepper gizzard. <laughs> <laughs> said after that, I said I drank one star. Yeah. I said, "Fuck it, you know what? I know what happened." He said, mm, "I think maybe you just." But it was hardball. Meanwhile, the hospital they were wasting my time, so they and cured, they were cajoling me to so I can pay money and sleep okay. over. Doctor didn't say you had And then another another big thing is first responder. So in my case, I later found out that because. Not, not, not to, but in, in the States, when something like that is about to happen, the pilot has radioed the tower. The tower is getting ready, mm. fire, ambulance, police. This plane is going to go down. So get to the area. None of that happened because the plane crashed, but the fire didn't start till later. Mm. Most of the passengers died from the fire. Yeah. If, yeah, if first responders had gotten there, quick enough, some people would have survived. Yeah. Even if you survived without a leg or, or, or You know, I think, that, and I must be really honest here, my office got burnt, my still got burnt two days ago, and um, I've lost the building, the two buildings, I've lost the buildings. Did you have it insured? Yeah, I lost the, shoot, uh, the studio, everything oh. went down. And um, the call- everything, I mean, you had, it was a studio, a functioning studio, Function had lots of equipment. Up to date equipment, and I wow. can say that you know, with every sense of pride, we invested a lot to put the equipment. You know, it went down, and um, we called. Um, I didn't, I couldn't do anything. I saw the fire like this, and I was like, Yeah, I couldn't do anything. My guys came and they responded well. And uh, when some, you know, as ladies or girls, we do some were running around crying, say, Hey, don't panic, don't, nobody should go there. Because there was smoke already and mm. everybody was panicking and some people were crying and don't save those like you can't save some equipment and just end up in fire. Just mm. stay here. And, and that's what I did. And you know, it was serious pandemonium on my street, everybody and all that. And uh, they called the fire service. They got there, I think in record time, like 30, 40 minutes. The fire went off after like 15, 20 minutes. And I thought that was record time here. Ten years ago. Ten years ago, you, their numbers will not go through, mm. or they will say they, they don't have water, or they will say okay everything is set, but we are looking, we are waiting for someone to okay. give us go mm. ahead, mm. go ahead, while the entire building would burn. So, so it's very slow, but man, I I think I actually even really need to go there to say thank you because by now, our office will have been outside. Let me ask you a question, Ayat, and I need to come back to this, but let me ask you, I. I question I you said people were crying people wanted to go in to save equipment yeah. Yeah. you were the one going yeah. life is much better than you know mm. yeah, sure. now you've gotten to a point yeah. you've gotten to a certain level of success and, and things like that but then 
I think this is also another thing people fail to understand that no matter how high they are, Neto, oh, Miss Amorebe, oh, Kenya, <laughs> Kenny, you still have obstacles mm. even on that mm. level of yeah. success. Mm. Now, but then, do you think the way you started, all the disappointments that you had, are the things that help sustain your faith that is going to be better? You know, no matter what it is, this is for another person. That's the end of they'll be like, ah, my life is already over. But then I know it's unsure and all that. But then. What is the, like, when something huge like that happens, it was almost, I mean, I called you immediately, I have to, yeah. I even did, to be honest, I have to say, I'm very grateful that you're here, because I didn't think you were going to come. As I was talking to him, I said, oh my God, I'm so sorry, I swear to you, I was, I, I was just going, I'm so sorry, I understand, so, no, but I'll, I'll see you on Wednesday. <laughs> like, like, so, I'm like, I'm going to I'm going to see you on Wednesday. Yeah, that's, 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 and then even yesterday, he said, so I'll see you, on, you know, I'll see you tomorrow, even when I change the time. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. So I'm, I have to say I'm extremely grateful. But then it goes back again to what I was saying. What is that thing? And I'm, I'm going to have to go around the table as well. What is that thing that even, and I'm sure everybody has gotten to that point where this thing really walk or, mm. or this is a very bad spot, mm. or, or this hole is very deep. Or, what is that thing that keeps you going and going, just saying it will get better or it has to get better? I mean, what is that motivation? What is that inspiration? I think some people have it and at some point, some people lose it. You have to be in it. You have to mm -hmm. believe that this thing, you know, um, there's a journey. It's a journey, rather. Um, when I started this whole thing, when I came in here to start Lagos, I bought a nylon bag, not a big bag, a nylon bag here. So um, when I occupied my first office, you know, and I met the landlord, he told me whether, he asked me whether I wanted to play football here. Then I got the main first building, I got the second building, and we have a station here. And, they, and um, for us, we still have, um, you have to believe in yourself and see the big picture. Um, if you ask me 10 years ago if we were going to be here, I would say no. But what we have done over the years is that we set a standard, we set a goal. Once we get there, before we get there, we already know that, okay, we are closed. Yeah, yeah. Then the next one, yeah. then the next one, then the next one. So, like, when people tell me, are oh, you, you've arrived. <laughs> really? I don't think I have. I don't, I don't think I will ever, I ever will. Because um, if you wanted to build two-story buildings and you have one, maybe you are closed. But if you plan to build an estate, 50 flats, on the, you have on your five, and someone is telling you you've arrived, mm. it be like I have a long way to go. Yeah. So at every point of success, we see, we have, we design something else that is big okay. and it's bigger. And mm -hmm. when, when people say, and I hate people, some people say this, I don't like it. Like, um, and it's, I think it's about our exposure and orientation, that look, you better take everything now. You don't know mm -hmm. what's going to happen tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's the now, I know that a lot of people are scared to invest in their business or profession or what they believe in because they think it will just go away. So the first, when they make money, they go and buy a house somewhere, they go, then the business starts suffering. Yeah. <clears throat> if few people continue to invest, continue to learn more, train other, you know, train your people. It's been a while that we did fire drill. You know, we do all these things, but my guys acted like we did, we had one a day before the, hmm. the um, incident. So it has to be you and how well you, because you train your people. We do, I, I listen to, a lot of successful people. Um, there was one interview of Mark Zuckerberg I was listening, listening to. If you had to get his attention, these key guys interviews them. It's about people around you because you cannot do the job. You can't have division and drive division alone. You need soldiers, you need generals who will drive with you. When you're not there, that's why I'm able to come here. Because my small office and everything, I don't sign all checks. I, have, I, don't, sign, checks. I don't sign all checks. I don't sign all checks. I don't do all approvals. She does, this lady does, does approval. She does approval. And they pay money without me knowing. I meet people at my office and I ask them what they're doing and they say, I'm your new social and so. They know the people they can employ. But when it comes to the guys, then, then I, will be able, I will be the one to employ the, the generals. Then you can do the other ones. Once you have the right orientation, you know what you're doing, you know what we, we do here. Then you know how you know it's like marking skin. Mm. Then they, they have the blueprint to employ mm. the other guys. Wow. Also have a place that you now that our wisdom wall now that you had to even if you pass an interview you have to go there to understand what drives us as a company.
to be able to now resume properly to sit down there, to call yourself an employee. So it depends on what vision and what you know you carry. When you my guys will tell you they sent a message the next morning and I was moved. That guys, no program was failed. I wasn't the one that sent the message. No program was failed. We all have to improvise. We work here. There's this, we, okay, whatever I'm saying here. We work here. I'm trying to change that now, but they refuse to listen. Now, look, it's not about work. It's not about activity. It's about progress. It's about being the solution factory. It's not about working. Totally because some people just want to work. We work here, work here, and they, they don't achieve much. But there's orientation that, look, guys, shoot where, every, everywhere shootable. No program must fail. Mm. And the old trending set, everything got burned down. But we short trending. The short trending, we did all the interviews and everything. They put the chair here, whatever this looks like here. You know, this one, they improvise without telling them what to do. So I'm very happy with that. So investing in, you know, time and time the people. Yes. I'll be very honest with you. The whole game started with uh, Ray Power. Uh, Ray Power, somebody said it earlier, was, uh, I think it was Efe that said it, that um, it came around when there was no private radio. Government owned radio, TV, and radio stations. They were out there, but they were not really touching people. Like I said, I will keep on saying it. I went to school in Los Angeles. I'm very proud to have graduated from America. And again, I'm also very proud to have been invited to come back home when there was nothing. I came when everything was zero. And when we first came, we came with all American music. I would like to give props to High Chief uh, Ali Ogodokwesi and again with NBC, National Broadcasting Commission. They said we should play Nigerian music. We were busy playing all American music. Tupac, Notorious B.I.G., P. Diddy. We were promoting all those songs. That's why you say you love uh, the Lost Boys. But Dr. Dokwesi said, all these people you are playing, <laughs> <laughs> Are they your cousins? <laughs> Are they your brothers? Can you call any of them? I said, man, we came from LA. We have to showcase Los Angeles. <laughs> I beg, play Nigerian music. I said, they don't have records. I remember Sony Music then, they released a record, Lieutenant Shotgun. Yeah. It, they don't have CD for it. Yeah. It was on a vinyl. And Dr. Dopesi, the first, baby yeah, Baby Joe, thank yeah. you. The first Nigerian to ever bought a CD recorder. A CD recorder. He said, okay, what does it? I said, they need to put the record on a CD so that we can play. We can't be playing record. He said, okay, you know what? We will buy the CD recorder. He bought the CD recorder. We transferred the record from vinyl into a CD and we started playing it. And everybody fell in love so with it. Very big, very big. We promoted the song. Not today that you, before you, a big shout out no. to DJs. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I, like, I like to say this to you. <laughs> Kenny could sell any song at that time. Mm -hmm. So, be, uh, Love Me Dead, to, to the whole country and yes, outside yes. of the country. Sold, um, tell me. Uh, Baby Joel, okay, that, 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 that guy from being in the public, we didn't hear what the guy said. Nero, sold the guy to Ooh. us. And the guy became a star, bigger star in Nigeria than in his country. Than mm -hmm. his country. He had this, yeah, they had the skills. They had, uh, I think it was a combination of a lot of stuff. Uh, first and foremost, um, Ray Power versus the other guys. Basically, it was like HD technology versus, mm. <laughs> you know those kind of TV, <laughs> you know those kind of cupboard <laughs> TVs, right? So in terms of um, content, sound quality, and all of that, you know, now, they, they, they brought certain elements to the game. However, um, because of the, every, everybody was, was basically tuned out to Ray Power. It was the new thing, it mm. was, you know. And luckily for us, as- What was, it, what was, it, what was different from Ray Power than all the other it, it, First and foremost, as I say, it was a privately owned radio station. Good day. 24 hour broadcast. That is a killer. Yeah. yeah. 24 hours broadcast. broadcast. Because they say it could never be done. Yeah. They say, why well, are you wasting this? And we were never even on NEPA. Then you had guys, because that could have happened, and the people who had the responsibility of delivering it could have a different slant. That's it. We had people who understood the power of entertainment, who knew the place of entertainment. Mm -hmm. Because it was a perception thing. 
Uh, and, and I must say, there was a music industry before that period, mm. right? There was a vibrant, solid music industry. It collapsed, right? If you, if you go back to the, the, the Tabansi, Majek Fashek, you yeah, know, you're, days, you're right? Yeah. Because we spoke about that. There was a, a time where music was huge. And then it was huge. And then it was the dark age. Yes. Yeah. yes. So, so the dark now, Ray Power came... KK D1. It was, like you say, it was opportunity. It was a mixture of everything. It just, mm -hmm. everything just like Voltron. The different beats just came together and, and the it right clicked. At the right, right time. At the right time. Yeah. NBC's position. Uh, even even the, the, the uh, uh, Chief Doctor. See, imagine if he had a different mentality as mm. to what the station was supposed to do. Now, you had a scenario where these people had an obscene amount of airtime and they had the ear of the active, the people, the the, part, the 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 guys in the in in the society who were who were influencers in their own little way. You know how how you have like a big brother. How you have this guy amongst a circle of friends. In, you know you have those your, your hall of residence. My camera be that hall, right? There's <coughs> one guy on the second floor who is the go-to guy who has all the cassettes, who has all the whatever. He's he's the groove master, right? You had all those guys tuned on to Ray Power. So the influence was, was like, it, was, it had a rippling effect. Yeah? So we had, you, before Ray Power, you'd have to wait for a week. Maybe turn to OGBC, wait for Rap Attack or something, mm. one 30 minutes or one one hour, you in know. In a week. In a week. That entire circle. Well, cool FM was. Um, no, no, no. It was Ray Power. It was Ray Power. after Ray Power. No, it was, yeah. Years, yeah. Two years after, after Ray Power. Two years after Ray Power, yeah. there was rhythm. There was rhythm. Who was reading? Really? No, 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 cool FM. No, 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 cool FM. Baby boy, baby boy. Who is reading? Yes, Olisa yeah. yeah. was with reading. Yes. When was Olisa? Was with reading? Yes. yes. That was a year after reading. I mean, after reading was on here, then came cool FM. Uh -huh. Because in Body House, what we used to do, we used to book sets with uh, this man. <laughs> I mean, Body House there. Uh, so you book sets with this man with radio. I'm not man. You understand? You, you're not you the <laughs> But you look you young. So by the time we listen to reading, <coughs> you listen to uh, Ray Power. You understand? So that's what we used to listen to radio yeah. at night. You know what you said? Uh, I used to listen. I used to record uh, mm. of air RN2 with the likes of JJ, yeah. Manny Onumono, John, John, John Momo, yeah. John. all those big, big names now. Mm -hmm. I used to record them, and whenever the, their shows are not on, I play the cassette. Play yeah. I listen to the style, listen what they're doing, mm -hmm. and just okay. marvel. So that was what was happening. You had to wait a whole That's week. <laughs> right, to, uh, Radio Rivers Trace, FM Stereo, if you put wow. access, or OGBC or RN2 to just catch one hour, mm -hmm. a one hour hip hop or R&B or yeah. whatever show a week. Once Ray Power broke, you, it was, we had, you know that punch, stop and start, right, with your cassette. Mm -hmm. You had music, excellent music. You had people who, who, had, who had the vibe, who knew, the, who could even talk about the, the artists, yes. the musicians, because, and all that information. Because we, we grew up in, uh, in LA, and all yeah. those record labels, they were Sunset Drive, where yeah. we can walk into, where we can open the door, Finally. where we can talk to them. We had the mind, we knew exactly what was going on. And there was no, no manager between me and the, the CEO. So, and the CEO gave a free hand. Say, do whatever you want. Compared to if you go to a public housing, somebody of my age, I, I will have many bosses. Mm -hmm. And again, I'll be very careful. I couldn't do many things that I was doing. Mm -hmm. And that gave a lot of room open door, was blank check. And we didn't take, we took advantage of it and we didn't misuse it. Yeah, use it very we use it very positively. My mom took my school fees report and put it at her bedside and said, God, you have said you're the father to the fatherless and this is what I've brought to you. This is this boy's school fees, 180,000. There's no way I'm seeing that money for a cake. I can't, you know. And yeah, at that time, you know, and somebody anonymous came and paid my fees from JS2 to SS3. Yeah. Yes, from JS2 to SS3, and said that he doesn't want to be paid till i 